Hey Art Beaters, Becky here, and I've got a brand new video for you today. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to make peyote seed bead bezels around a focal. I'll be showing you how to make an oval-shaped bezel around a stone, a pear-shaped bezel around a pear-shaped stone, and I will even show you how to make a rectangular peyote bezel around a focal bead like a hand-painted Russian artist bead. So let's take a look. I'm going to be showing you how to make peyote bezels for a variety of different uh, stone shapes. We have the classic round rivoli. I've got an oval shaped stone here and a pear shaped stone. Really pretty. And I also have a rectangular hand painted focal bead. So I'm going to show you how you can use peyote bezel techniques to create a beautiful bezel around each of those shapes. So let's start with the round rivoli. To create a peyote bezel for any of these shapes, you're going to need 11 aught cylinder beads. They can be treasures or delicas or icos. And you're also going to need 15 aught round seed beads. Um, you're gonna start off using the 11 aught cylinder beads uh, to start the bezel, and then you'll come in with those smaller 15 aught rounds to kind of cinch up and tighten that bezel around your chosen stone. You're also going to need a beading needle. Um, I have a size 12 beading needle, size 11 works too. Um, and some beading thread. I have Toho 1G beading thread here in a dark color, so it's easier for you to see. So to start, I have cut about three feet of my thread and I've added that thread to my needle. And to start my peyote bezel around my round rivoli here, I'm going to create a ring of 11 aught cylinder beads. This is an 18 millimeter rivoli, so I'm gonna need about 46 uh, 11 aught cylinders. Um, and you can always check that with your chosen stone uh, to make sure that you have a good number to fit around that stone. So I have added 46 11 aught cylinders to my thread and I'm going to kind of loop these around and see if that fit looks right. And that's looking pretty close for the bezel that I want to create. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to slide my seed beads down almost to the end of my thread, but I'm gonna leave a tail long enough that I can weave back in um, when I'm done making my bezel. And I am going to loop my thread back through these seed beads to create a ring. And you want to make sure you get through all of those. Okay, so I've strung my needle back through all of those seed beads to create my ring, and you can see that my working thread is back at the start of where my tail is. And this is a good opportunity to check that fit again, and this looks like it's going to be really a nice fit, so I'm happy with the 46 seed beads. And so now what you're gonna wanna do is I'm going to knot the tail thread uh, to my working thread just to make sure that loop is nice and tight and secure. Okay, and then I'm going to bring my working thread through this seed bead right next to the knot so we're not starting our bezel from the knot. That can get a little wonky. And then we're going to start our peyote bezel. This is a lot like starting tubular peyote stitch. So what you're going to do is you're going to pick up one of your 11 aught cylinder beads. You're going to skip over that next bead in the row and come through this third bead. And pull tight so you've got those two beads staggered there. So you're gonna pick up 
another bead, skip through that next bead over and come through the bead after that. And you're gonna continue that for the rest of this row. Skip over a bead, go through the next bead. So keep doing that until you get all the way around. Okay, I've added almost all my beads for this row and I'm coming back to the beginning. So I'm gonna show you how to step up for the next row. So you're going to skip over the bead and go through the next bead as usual for that last bead in your row. And then you're ready to step up. So you're gonna take that thread and go through that top bead, that first bead you added to this row to step up the stitch. And now we are ready to add our next row. So you can see this bezel is forming and that, that center line of beads, that's gonna be the center of your bezel. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build up the front of the bezel, that, that part that's gonna be on top of the front of your stone. We're gonna build that up first and then weave our thread to the back uh, to build up the back. Um, so I'm gonna start adding in 15 aught seed beads for my next row and that's going to cinch up the bezel and get it uh, get it to kind of start curving uh, forward to make kind of a cupped bezel shape. So I am doing this row exactly how I did the last row, but this time I'm picking up a 15 aught bead. You can see they're um, smaller than the 11 aughts. Picking up a 15 aught bead, skipping over that bottom bead and going through the next up bead in the row and we're going to continue that all the way around and then we're going to step up just as we did before so we're adding 15 aught beads for this row so you can see as i add the bead and start pulling this is cinching up and this is going to cinch up even more as I add rows. Um, so just trust the process. It's going to come together really nicely. As you can see, as I pull, it's starting to cinch up. Okay, as you can see, I'm at the end of my first row of 15 aughts here. So I'm gonna skip over this lower bead, go through that next bead in the row Pull tight you can see it's already starting to cinch up and then I'm going to step up by going through that first 15 knot bead in this row that I started here um, and I'm gonna add another row of 15 knot seed beads here to cinch this up even more um, and you might be kind of it's kind of confusing because these 15 knot beads are smaller so the rows look less staggered, but you are going to be adding this next row of 15 knot seed beads between the previous row of seed beads. So you're gonna skip over that 11 knot bead and go through the next 15 knot seed bead. And that's gonna start to cinch things up even more. So that's what you're doing for this row. Uh, skipping over that 11 knot bead and then going through the next 15 knot bead in the row. And you're going to do that all the way around once again. All right, I am nearing the end of my second row of 15s, and you can see that this bezel is really starting uh, to cinch in and shape up. So I'm just going to add the last 15 for this row and then I'm going to step up through that first 15 I added in this row and I'm ready to add another row. I'm going to add one more row of 15 knot seed beads for a total of three rows of 15s and then I'm going to be ready to place my stone in the bezel and start working on the back of the bezel. 
Okay, I've added my third row of 15 knot seed beads to the front of this bezel, and now I'm ready to uh, put my stone in there. Oh, that's really pretty. Gorgeous, love that. So now what I wanna do is work on the back of the bezel uh, to keep it secure within the bezel. Um, so we're going to move our thread to the back of our bezel. Um, you can see that my thread is coming out of this 15 knot bead here. It's adjacent to this 11 knot. So I'm gonna go through that 11 knot. And then I'm gonna come through this next adjacent 11 knot. So just follow the bead path uh, to get to the back side, and you're gonna wanna come out of one of those staggered up 11 knots on the back, and you're going to add three rows of 15 knots to the back of your bezel, just as you did on the front. So skipping over that down 11, going through the next staggered up 11 in the row. And that's going to cinch the back of your bezel up nice and tight and closed around the stone. Remember, you're just gonna kinda pull tight and adjust as you go. And just continue that. I'm gonna make three rows just as I did for the front of my bezel. Okay, I've got my three rows of 15 knot seed beads on the back of this bezel, and that makes for a really pretty and secure bezel for my Rivoli stone here. So to finish the threads, I'm just going to weave them back in to the seed beads loop around so that I know it's secure and trim. And I'll do that with my working thread and my tail thread. So making a peyote bezel for an oval stone like this one is incredibly similar to making the bezel for the round stone. Um, this is a 30 by 22 millimeter oval. So we are going to create a loop of 66 11 knot cylinders to create our ring um, for the base of our bezel and then we will start the peyote bezel from there. I've got my loop of 66 11 knot cylinder beads all ready to go and I'm going to start uh, my first row of peyote to start the bezel. And just to note, you're gonna want an even number of beads for your loop on these round or oval bezels uh, just to make the stitch work. So just keep that in mind, use an even number if you're adjusting for a smaller or bigger size stone. All right, I've got my peyote bezel started and you can see that the oval shape is kind of starting to um, take shape here. And in the last bezel, I started right away um, adding rows of 15 knot seed beads. But for this bezel, I'm gonna add one more row of 11 knot cylinder beads. Okay, I've got that extra row of 11 knot cylinders in there and I'm going to start adding one row of 15 knot seed beads to start cinching up the front of the bezel. So I've already stepped up my row, so I've got a 15 knot on my needle. I'm gonna skip over that bottom bead, go through that bead, and start to pull tight. All right, I'm just about done with this row. I'm gonna add my last bead and then step up and I've got my needle positioned perfectly where it just kind of automatically steps up through that first 15 aught in the row. And then I'm gonna add one more row of 15 aught seed beads, and I'm actually gonna use this green color because I think it would look really nice with that shiny purple and the rust color that I have. So my second row of 15 knot, skip over that 11 knot, go through the next 15 knot in the row tight everything's starting to cinch uh, so I'll keep going with this row and then after I've got this row of beads added I think I'm ready to set my oval stone into 
the bezel. Okay, I've added my second and final row of 15 aught seed beads to the front of my bezel and my stone fits in here so beautifully. I'm really actually loving these colors, so that's always fun. Um, so now we're gonna do, we're going to weave the uh, thread to the back of the bezel and start cinching up that bezel on the back to keep the stone in place just as we did for our first round bezel that we made. And so you're following the path of the beads and you're gonna want your thread to exit out one of those up staggered beads on the peyote bezel. Um, and then I'm gonna start adding some 15 knot beads to the back of the bezel. I'll probably do two rows like I did on the front. Okay, I've got my two rows of 15 knot seed beads on the back of the bezel, so this is nice and secure. I did want to mention too that you can definitely add more rows of 15 knot seed beads to the back if you would like to add even more security to the back of your bezel. And you can also play around uh, with the rows and how you add them. For instance, this Rivoli ring, the last row of 15 aughts, um, they skipped through a stitch. So every other stitch doesn't have a bead added and you can totally do that um, if you want to. This stone has a lot of surface so you don't have to worry about really covering up too much of it. So let's say I'm going to add another row of 15 knot seed beads to make that scalloped look. So I've already moved my thread back to the front of the um, bezel and I'm coming out of one of those uh, 15 knot beads in the last row. So I'm just going to pick up another 15 knot seed bead and go through the next 15 knot in the row. And so to make that scalloped look, instead of adding a bead to this next stitch, I'm going to skip through. I'm going to skip through and just bring my needle and thread through without adding a bead. And that's also going to cinch your bezel up even more too. So that's that's a nice feature of that as well. So for the next stitch, I'm going to add another bead to my thread, go through the next 15 knot in the row. Pull. You can see the scallop is kind of starting to form. So for the next stitch, I'm not going to add a bead, but I'm going to pass through that next 15 knot in the row and pull. Add a bead, go through the next 15 knot bead in the row, pull. And that's what's gonna create that beautiful scalloped look on the front. As you get more comfortable with creating that scalloped stitch, you can totally take it two beads at a time. So I will add a 15 knot bead to my needle for the next one. And then I'm just gonna go through two of the 15 knot beads in the row. So I'm just combining both of those steps to create the scallop stitch into one. So then I just pick up another 15 knot seed bead and go through two beads in the row instead of one. and that can kind of speed up the stitch for you. There, so I've got that fun kind of scalloped look on the edge of my bezel, and now all that's left is to weave the thread into uh, the body of the bezel and kind of loop it around so we can secure the thread within the bezel and trim. So I'm just going to Kind of weave my thread in and out of the beads, making sure to follow the, the path of the beads so no thread is kind of visible. And then just kind of looping back in. And you'll feel, you'll feel your thread catch some of the other threads within the weave of the bezel. Um, so that's how you know it's gonna be good and tight. So you just wanna kind of loop that thread around within the body of the bezel a few times and then you'll trim and 
and you're going to do that with your tail thread as well. And it will get difficult the more you pass your thread through. So you may find more success switching to a smaller needle if, if that happens, but I think it's pretty secure now. So I'm going to trim it. And then we will do the same with our tail thread. But look how pretty that is. All right, so I've showed you how to make a bezel for a round stone and an oval stone. And next I'm gonna show you how to make a peyote bezel for a pear-shaped stone. This is a little different, so I will show you uh, where it differs, but it's going to start off the same. You're gonna start by making that loop of seed beads to start the peyote bezel. And I'm going to start with 64 11 knot cylinders for the loop for this stone. And this is a 30 millimeter pear stone. So um, 30 millimeter pear stone uses about 64 11 knot cylinders to start the loop. Again, you can adjust up or down depending on the size of your stone, uh, but keep in mind to keep that even number of beads uh, so the stitch works out correctly. Okay, we've added our 64 11 knot cylinder beads to the thread. We've looped the thread back around and tied a knot with our working tail and we're our working end of thread in our tail um, to make that loop nice and tight. And so we're gonna start this bezel the same as we did the last two. We're gonna add one row of 11 knot cylinders. So just as we did in the previous bezels, we're picking up an 11 knot, skipping through, skipping through that next bead in the row and then going through the third bead and continuing that for the row. So continue on for the rest of the row. Okay, I've started my peyote bezel and I've stepped up. I'm ready to add the next row. For this row, we're gonna add um, 15 odd seed beads, but we're not gonna add the last bead in the row. We're gonna skip and just do an empty stitch there and pinch it to form that V shape. And I'll show you what that looks like at the end of this row. So for this row, we're going to add the smaller 15 knot seed beads until we get to the end and then we're gonna skip adding that last 15 knot bead. But to start the stitch, it's gonna be all 15 knot seed beads for this row until the end. And I will show you what that looks like. All right, we're at the end of our row where we would uh, add another 15 aught bead, but we are not going to add a 15 aught bead to that last stitch. Instead, we're just going to create an empty stitch, um, just bring our needle and thread through that stitch without a bead and pull tight. And we're gonna pinch it a little to get that pear shape started. And then we're going to step up through that first 15 knot bead we added to this row. So that's where our V is going to be, that empty stitch, the point of our pair. So for our second row, we're adding more 15 aught seed beads. And then when we get to that V, we're going to add a seed bead to nestle into the V shape. And I will show you what that looks like. But for now, we are adding 15 aught seed beads in the way we did to that previous row. And then when we get to that empty stitch, we will add a seed bead in to nestle that V shape, kind of make it more defined. 
So I've given my little bezel a pinch there where the uh, empty stitch was. And you can see as I'm adding more 15 aughts to the row, that bezel is taking shape. So just pinch if you need help forming that shape. All right, I have reached the V shape where I pinched and skipped a bead on my previous row. I am coming out of the closest 15 knot bead from the previous row. So now I'm going to add, add a 15 knot bead to my thread. To um, nestle into those V's. And I'm actually going to kind of circle back through the two 11 knot beads that make up that V. Oh yeah, that is really nice. So that really helped form that, that pear shape there. I'm gonna come back up through that bead and then I'm going to go through the 15 knot bead in the previous row on the other side of the V. So now we've got that really nice pear shape all formed. Um, and now I'm going to uh, move my thread to the back of the bezel. I'm not going to set my stone into the bezel just yet. Actually, I want to add I want to add a row to the back of the bezel before I start to set my stone into it. So my thread is now to the back of my bezel. I am going to add a row of 15 aught seed beads to the back of the bezel. And then we will set our beautiful pear-shaped stone into the bezel and finish up the back. If I can get my needle through that bead to start off. There we go. I'm just going to add a row of 15s to the back of this bezel as we did on the front, but we won't have to skip any beads or anything like that since we have the pear shape already formed. I'm just going to show you how I'm adding my 15 knot seed bead over the V shape on the back of my bezel. So my thread is coming out of that first seed bead in the V. I'm going to skip over skip over the next seed bead in the V. I've got my 15 knot seed bead on my needle. Go through, go through that next bead in the V and add the 15 knot bead, just like I've been doing for the rest of the row. And then I'm gonna finish up this row and set my stone in the bezel. Okay, I've finished that row of 15 knots on the back of my bezel and I am adding my stone in fits really nicely. Um, we are going to be adding more to the back of this bezel to really get it in place, but the front is looking really gorgeous. So that's in place and I have stepped up. So we're going to add uh, more rows to the back of this bezel and I just want to make sure um, if you wove your thread to the back of the bezel and you didn't start your row at the point, um, you're just gonna wanna make sure that for the next row, your um, your thread is coming out of that next 15 knot over from the last uh, 15 knot, that 15 knot in the middle of the point, you wanna be coming out of that next 15 knot seed bead over uh, to start this row. So for this row, we're going to add three 15 aughts um, in a peyote bezel. Go 
go through that 50 knot, pull tight. Go through that 50 knots. So we've added three 50 knots. Now we're going to add eight 11 knots. Once you've added eight 11 knots, you're going to add eight 50 knots. After you've added those eight 50 knots, you're gonna add eight more 11 knots. Okay, we've added those eight 11 knots here. We've got the eight 50 knots from before, eight 11 knots here. Now that we've got those um, all added, we're gonna add three 50 knots And then we're going to add one 15 aught to nestle in that V. Um, and I'm just gonna bring it right through here. That's gonna cinch it up and get that point looking even better. And that will also get us lined up once we go through this bead. That will get us to the step up for the next row. So you can see I put I put that bead right on top of that last 15 knot bead um, that we used in the V. And then I came through this bead here, the previous row, and then stepped up through the first bead in the row we're working on. And you can see that this bezel is not exactly uh, secure yet, but this next row will really help with that. So for this row, we're gonna start by uh, doing an empty stitch. So we're gonna skip through to the next bead in the row without adding a bead. See there? Pull. Then we're going to add three 11 knots. One. Two. Three. Then we're gonna skip through the next one. So an empty stitch there, just bring it through. So we've skipped through that next stitch after adding three 11 knots. We're gonna add three more 11 knots. Three. So now we're going to skip through this next stitch. And add a 15. And we're going to repeat that three times. So I've added my 15. We're going to skip through this next stitch there. 
see this starting to take shape and then add a 15. Skip through the next stitch. Add a 15. And then one more time, skip through the next stitch. And add a 15. So then we're gonna skip through the next one and add three 11 aughts like we did on the other side. One, One more eleven knot. And then we're going to do that again. We're going to skip through the next stitch. So an empty stitch. And then three more eleven knot beads. One. Two. Three. Skip through here. Add a fifteen knot there. And you can see that has closed up our back of our bezel really nicely. Um, and I'm tempted to add another row of 15s to the front just to really get this um, secure. So that's the beauty of this bezel technique is you can get it kind of started and see where you need to adjust. So I'm going to add another row of 15s to the front here. So I have added one more row of 15 aughts to the front of my bezel and I think that looks really good and it feels really secure. Uh, so now all that's left to do is weave in these threads, my working thread and my tail thread as I did for my other peyote bezels. Um, so that's how you make a pear-shaped peyote bezel. All right, we've made a round bezel, an oval bezel and a pear-shaped bezel. Let's make a rectangular bezel. Um, this is gonna start in a similar way to the other bezels, but for this bezel, we need corners. So I will show you how we do that. We're gonna throw a little bit of a herringbone twist into that peyote bezel to make this rectangular bezel. Three, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty one. Now I'm going to add two of the corner bead colors. Three, 
And now I want 27 of the side color uh, for the side of my bead. Now we're gonna want two more corner beads. And then we'll string on 21 more of the side bead color, two more corner beads, 27 of the side color, two more corner beads. For this bezel, you're gonna wanna make sure if you're adjusting the size up or down that your side color is an odd number of beads um, because that's um, what's gonna make the stitch work along with those corner beads. So I know for the round bezels, it was all even numbers. Um, for these side colors, you want odd numbers. So once you've got your beads strung onto your thread, you're gonna bring Bring your beads down, leaving a tail long enough to weave in once you're done making your bezel. And then you're going to start it uh, like we did the other bezels where you loop the thread back through all of the beads, uh, make a loop with your beads, and then tie a knot with your tail and your working thread. Once you have your seed beads in a loop, uh, you wanna make sure that your thread is coming out between a corner bead and a side bead. Um, and this is where you're going to start your stitch. So you're gonna pick up a side color bead and you're gonna go right over that first one and come through the next bead. Just like that. So you're gonna keep doing that until you reach uh, the next corner color section. All right, I'm adding my last seed bead on this section of side beads. And I'm gonna skip over that last side bead and come through that first corner bead. So now that I'm on the corner bead, we wanna do something a little different to create that corner shape. So I'm picking up two of the corner colors and I'm gonna go down through that second corner bead. This, so this is kind of like a herringbone stitch. That's what's going to create that corner for you. You can kind of adjust uh, the beads how they lay. And now you're ready to start the next side. So we're picking up that side color, skipping over that first side color bead on the loop, and then going through the next one to create the POD stitch. So we're gonna continue that for this next side and then make the next corner. So once again, I'm at the end of my side here. So I'm going to add my last side bead, come out through that first corner bead. And now I add two corner beads to my thread, come down through that second corner bead to do a little bit of a herringbone move, I can adjust my beads here if needed, there that's beautiful, and now I'm ready to start the next side with those blue beads going right over that first one and through the second bead. And continuing on with this side until we get to the next corner and then peyote this side until we get to that last corner. All right, so I'm back at the start of my bezel and I'm going to step up just by coming up through that first 
a blue bead. And now I'm going to add another row of 11 knots. Um, so just as I did before, I'll add the side colors one at a time until I get to this corner. I'll add two corner colors, come down through that bead, add side colors one at a time, add two co corner colors, and so on. I wanted to show what you do once you um, add your next row of corner beads. I've got the two corner beads added. I've come down through this middle row and now I'm going to go through uh, that up bead on the first, the first part of the peyote stitch on the next side. And now I'm ready to continue this side until I get to the next corner. All right, I finished adding my uh, next row of 11 aught cylinder beads. Now I'm gonna start adding a row of 15 aught beads. Um, and I don't really need to step up for this row because I'm starting exactly where I want to be starting, right here. Um, so I'm gonna bring I've picked up my 15 knot bead and I'm going to bring that needle through the next staggered bead in the row. And this is going to start to cinch up my bezel. Add another 15 knot, pick up a 15 knot skip over that down bead and go through the next bead. Pick up a 15, go through the next bead over. and continue that until you get to the next corner. So I'm adding my last 15 knot bead to this side. And I'm gonna come through this corner and I am not going to add uh, two corner beads on this go around because the beads that I added the last time are kind of perfectly aligned with this row. So I'm just gonna come back down through that second corner bead without adding um, any more corners. We can add corners um, on the next row of 15 knots. I think that will line up nicely, but by just going through that, through those corner beads, we're ready for the next row. We're going to continue, or the next side, I should say, and we're going to continue adding 15 knot beads to this side. So for this row, we're not adding corner beads. We're just going to go through the existing two corner beads to get to the next side. You can see my bezel starting to shape up. I've added my last 15 knot bead to this row. I'm not adding a corner bead or corner beads. I'm going to go just go through the existing corner beads and then um, I'm going to step up for the next row by going through that first 15 knot seed bead we added. So you can see this bezel is shaping up. I am going to add another row of 15 knot seed beads. And this time I think I am going to add in those corner beads. Um, so we can get even more shape to this bezel. But first we're just starting off with 15 odd beads until we get to the next corner. All right, so I've reached that next corner. I've added two of the corner beads to my thread. I'm going to go down through the next corner bead and pull tight. And then I'm going to come through the next 15 odd seed bead on the next side of this row. And 
And now I'm ready to add uh, 15 aught seed beads to this side. So that's what we're doing for this row. Adding 15 aught seed beads, adding two corner beads, 15 aught seed beads, two corner beads, 15 aught seed beads, two corner beads. For our next row, we are going to add a 15 aught bead. And then we're going to pass through the next uh, stitch, just make an empty stitch. So skip over the bead with your needle and thread. We're not adding a bead and then pull. Just gonna cinch everything up. So just repeat that for this side. Pick up a 15 knot bead and go through the next bead in the row and then make an empty stitch in the row by just passing through the next bead without picking up a bead. Then pick up a bead, go through the next bead in the row, make an empty stitch, Pick up a 15 aught bead, go through, make an empty stitch, pick up a bead and go through the next bead in the row, empty stitch. And then add a 15 odd bead. For this go around, I'm not going to add a corner bead, so I'm just going to go through that corner bead after adding my last bead on this side. And I'm not adding quarter beads, so I'm just going right through that second existing corner bead. And then I'm ready to do the next side. So we'll add a bead, empty stitch, add a bead, empty stitch, don't add a corner bead. For all the way around. Okay, I've got uh, the front of my bezel done, so I have set my bead, my focal bead, into the bezel and I have woven my thread to the back. I am going to add a row of 15 aughts and I'm going to add one corner bead to the corner here. Um, so I'm just going to pick up a 15 knot bead. Go through the next bead in the row. And pull. So you see I've reached my corner bead. You see I've reached my corner bead. So I'm just going to skip over those corner beads. Keep them as they are. And go through the next blue side bead on this next side over. That'll give me a nice corner on the back there. And then I'm just going to continue that peyote bezel like this on the back of my bead. So I'm just going to keep going just like that. So 15 knot, go through the next bead. And just keep going in that fashion. All right, so I've got that row of 15 aughts on the back of my bezel. I'll probably do another row of 15 aughts between this row. And then I'll probably repeat what I did on the front where I add a 15 aught empty stitch, 15 aught empty stitch for kind of that scalloped look and that'll give it a really secure 
um, back to my bezel and then I'll just weave in my working thread and tail thread and I have this beautiful seed bead bezel for this gorgeous hand painted bead. So once you've got all of these beautiful bezels, there's a few different kind of things you can do with them. You can make rings like these. These are just made with uh, peyote stitch bands to continue the ring. We've got a few different rings like that. Um, they would make excellent focals in a necklace design. You could add some fringe and a seed bead loop bail to the top and you have a beautiful pendant. Um, you could link them together, maybe stitch on a jump ring, make it a little dangle or a focal for a bracelet. There's all kinds of different things you can do with these beautiful pieces once you've got a bezel for them. So I hope this helps you make some seed bead bezels for your beautiful focal pieces. Thanks so much for watching and I hope this helps you make the bezel of your dreams using the peyote technique. Um, please make sure to leave a like and a comment. Um, I would love to know if you've made peyote bezels or if you have any questions about what I showed here today. And as always, make sure to subscribe so you're the first to know when our next video comes out. Thanks and I'll see you next time. Bye!